should never have happened. Uh, people of northern New Mexico are rich in its culture and tradition. Many people live in the Adobe homes and their bank, that their great grandparents built. In some instances, they were over 100 years old. Uh, and these homes are cold. Many of these residents in northern New Mexico pride themselves on their self-sufficiency. And, and to do this, uh, there were a lot of viejitos who, who loved living in their small villages in northern New Mexico, like Española, Coyote, Naina, who are still ranching, still farming. Their ties to the land def defines northern New Mexico in its spirit. But the reality is that many of these older folks are culturally rich, but are on fixed incomes. These are people that, are, that were hit doubly hard by this crisis. These are poor people. And everybody was coming to me and asking me, why is this happening to us? Is it only because we're poor? And I said, I don't have the answers. I have called uh, John Gillis from the uh, New Mexico Gas Company. I have called PNM. I have called uh, uh, PRC. I have called several other agencies, and I don't get uh, straight answers. But give me a uh, give me a chance, and I'll see what I what answers I can come up for you. They were wondering, well, our businesses are being closed. Is it fair that our businesses are being closed at this point? You know, they kept asking me, where's the PRC in all this crisis? And I did, I spoke and I communicated with Jerome on a regular basis. And he, he, we agreed that we were going to introduce this uh, memorial and that they were going to get to the bottom of it. And I'm sure uh, it's, a, it's a little late, but the reality it is that the damage has already been done. You know, the inconvenience are, are my constituents going to get reimbursed for the lost wages or having to stay home and wait for the gas company or having to stay home because they couldn't take a bath and go to work? Are they going to get uh, reimbursed for the extra ordinary, extra ordinary, ordinary purchases that, have to, that they have to make to stay alive, to keep warm? The medical bills that they, uh, I'm sure a lot of people are ill. Well, I'm sure a lot of people got sick. You know, not once did I hear of anybody going into our public housing system and checking with these residents and the tenants and finding out if they had blankets, if they had electric heaters. Did anybody from HUD come in and say, uh, here's another $100,000 to ensure that uh, you purchase at least one small space here per family? I never not once heard that, and it bothered me because a lot of these elderly people refused to leave their homes. Yes, they, maybe they had a child or a, or a sibling or a kid that would take them in. I sure as heck wouldn't have left my mother at her home uh, in, during this crisis. I would have taken her to my house, and I would have not been here if I had to stay and take care of her. But a lot of elderly people can't, don't have that luxury of having children to take care of them or for other family members. And a lot of them don't have the luxury or don't want to leave their homes. That's the bottom line. What about the systems that were retagged? I understand, I'm not sure, but I'd like to hear if it's true that a lot of these systems were, were retagged and that people were told that they weren't like their, their system until they replaced it. Two, three thousand dollars for a new system for somebody on a fixed income of $189 a month. These are some of the questions that we need to know. I know that the gas company did uh, was working on every, as much as, or as fast as they possibly could. And I know that they've, uh, they've come up with programs such as uh, the, well, we've got the LAI program, but, and I know that they carry it too because I've always carried the weatherization and energy crisis programs through the, uh, through the uh, uh, Mortgage Finance Authority. Are they going to increase the, the uh, funds for these programs? We, they have a heat New Mexico. Are we going to? Are they going to be pumping more money into these so that we can uh, uh, reimburse some of these people? These are the answers that we need to know. That I'm asking: Is FEMA going to come in? I don't think so. <laughs> is 175,000 that the governor appropriated is that going to be sufficient? Is the million dollars that the New Mexico Gas Company that they're coming up with is that going to be sufficient for the number of homes that were that were uh, that were turned?
turned off. There's a lot of questions that I have. Yesterday we had a, uh, an argument or a discussion, not an argument, we had a discussion on this floor about uh, prejudice, about hate mail, and, and I'm wondering, because I, a lot of people keep telling me they're, they're, uh, we're, we were the hardest hit because we're the poorest. And I go, I don't think that was the reason. Well, find out the reason. Find out why uh, we were the hardest hit. Is it just because we're poor? I know that Representative Brodera and the governor and some other uh, representatives went to Española to talk to our constituents. I know she did, and I know that, uh, that they were very concerned and she met with hundreds of people. And they were angry. You know, when I saw it in the newspaper, I thought, thank God I was so busy and I couldn't go because my constituents were angry. They're frustrated and angry over this. And we need answers. You know, I had one constituent tell me that uh, the gas company had instructed their, their, uh, their uh, employees not to like pilots until the, until the New Mexico National Guard got there, or until they arrived. And the employees stood around doing nothing, waiting until the, yes, until the National Guard arrived in Española, because that somebody had said that we were a drug-infested and criminal-linked community and that they were worried for their own protection. Give me a break, what a slanderous remark. I am so disappointed in, if anybody said that. I come from a beautiful valley, a beautiful community with good, decent, law-abiding and God-fearing people. And this is a slap in the face to a lot of us.